Hi, hello and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I am Katie and I'm a DPhil student at Oxford. And today I'm joined with Rosie, who is just a little roo on both YouTube and Instagram. And today we are answering your questions that you submitted to us on Insta a few weeks ago. So yeah, let's get into it. Does it ever feel normal to be around so much history and culture and stuff? And for me, the answer is no. no. I kind of become oblivious to how beautiful the buildings are because I see it all the time. And then I have to kind of actively think about looking at them and thinking, wow. But it never feels normal to be here, if that makes sense. I agree, it, it doesn't. Um, and for me, as someone who is really, really interested in archaeology and the people who were here before us, I think that adds another level to it in that I could be studying a group of people or writing an essay about things that are younger than this university. Um, and that's an archaeology degree. And like even just walking up, say like stairs to hall, in some of the older colleges like Maudlin for example, the stairs into hall, so like where you go to eat, are completely worn away so they've got like a big dip in the middle because of the amount of people and students and staff who over hundreds and hundreds of years have gone up and down these stairs and I can't look at Oxbridge without that essentially being part of everything that I think about all these buildings and it's never going to feel normal it, you get used to it in the sense that this, these are your surroundings and you learn to call it home and it feels homely but in terms of like actually getting to the point where it no longer feels like you're in this other world <laughs> no maybe if we both went to a school that looks like this then it would feel yeah. normal um, I guess like obviously if you grew up in Oxford it would feel normal but I'm from Manchester, which is not <laughs> I'm from Dover, so they're the opposite ends of the spectrum. But it's nice. It's a privilege. And I think that's a good thing for it to always feel like a privilege because yeah. once you forget like the sort of leg up a place like this gives you, then Yeah, it kind of takes some of the like magic away from it, doesn't it? If it's mm. just expected of like you wanna be here. Next question is, how to use your time efficiently when there is so much to do at both Oxford and Cambridge? Having a like, lack of structure can either be really beneficial or really difficult for some people. I think it is all about flexibility and finding out when you work best. Mm -hmm. So I definitely work best in the morning or super late at night, which I never do unless I have to, if I have a deadline. But I cannot work after lunch. For like two or three hours, I might as well just be like a piece of toast because I literally <laughs> don't do anything. I just like lay and I struggle to do anywhere and I cannot focus so I'm just making myself aware of that and do errands and stuff there instead. Structure your day as best you can even if you don't have any like actual set structure really try and give yourself a timetable of say in the morning you'll do your actual hard focused work because that's when you work best then you'll have a proper lunch break maybe go for a walk see another college if you're at Oxbridge because you can get into every college with your card mm -hmm. if you're at any other uni just go for a wander have a sit outside but I really would kind of emphasize being outdoors do something yeah outdoors not your desk. or at least away from a screen and away from your desk mm -hmm. and then in the afternoon if you don't work well straight after lunch like you said that's when you do your errands or for me maybe that's when I do like Duolingo or something yeah for, Spanish that I'm learning, so something that feels more like a game. Yeah, like I'll do like Instagram stuff then, or like Duolingo, or something that I enjoy doing, but is still productive. Yeah, that's like the key, I think. Is it or like even just stuff like laundry? Like it's all about fun. Like once it's done, like I've still made yeah. effort to do it. Yeah. Because your day, your day isn't just the morning and the afternoon. If you don't work well in afternoons, but you do work well in evenings then use your different time blocks however you like. It, it, there's no set way of having to actually do things. So another question that we got asked was, where should I study humanities and where should I study science? There was quite a few about those. Typically, I would say people will say Oxford for humanities yeah. and Cambridge for science. 
I'm not sure what the science course is like at Cambridge, but... Yes, yeah, so it's different. Um, at Oxford you have the separate sciences as you expect them, whereas at Cambridge they have what's called natural sciences, which is all the sciences in one. Um, so you apply basically for all of biology, chemistry, physics. And you then will end up specialising. Some YouTubers who I know who've done this are Holly, Gabrielle and Paige as well. They both have vlogged their whole time doing it if you're interested in the way you can then specialise in that course. But in terms of which one is better, it would also depend very, very heavily on your preferences in terms of do you want to go just study biology for the whole time you're there or do you want to go and do all of them. Equally at Oxford you do four years. Like for me I did biology at Nottingham for my undergraduate and I was awful at physics and I really didn't enjoy chemistry so that's why I would have been awful for me yeah, at Cambridge. Me I would have picked Oxford for that. Neither of them are bad at either obviously. Um, they're great at both but yeah both great for both and that's such a like cop out <laughs> Okay, last question is how did you fund your degree slash degrees? So at Oxbridge you do have to sign a thing to say that you won't work or at least you do an undergrad. Um I ignored this. <laughs> it's very hard as a state school to home, not not yes. gonna lie, I had every intention of working in whatever way I could. So I found a little loophole which involved working for the college or for the university. They don't seem to mind if you're working for them, which <laughs> is a little better bit or worse. Yeah. Um, so I worked on the college bar during my undergrad, behind the bar as just generic bar staff and then also as a, like a voted in but also paid position as treasurer of the bar the year after. What college were you at? St Peter's. Mm -hmm. So there's not many undergraduate colleges that have a completely student run bar. There's a lot where students can work on the bar but they're run by a company or yeah. like one manager. Whereas St Peter's is 100% student run. So I was treasurer and then one of my friends was manager and they're both paid positions which are just the Oxford living wage by the hour but it was enough for me to afford my rent and without it I wouldn't have been able to afford my rent. It's so expensive, like, that is one thing Oxford is like on par cost wise with London now. Yeah. So for me funding my defo is kind of similar actually I'm self funded um, which is a whole other shenanigans. <laughs> I don't agree with self funded defo so I'm here now so we're just gonna brush over that. I fund my defo by A having the UK governmental student loan. You can Unlike the undergraduate loan, you can pick how much you want and everyone has an option of how much they get. I've gone for the maximum because it's hella expensive. Um, so I also worked in retail for the entirety of my first year um, on Sundays just in the Westgate at Gantt. Um, I did summer schools, so like Rosie did, I did a programme here called Unique and you work for two to four weeks and basically run... Um, yeah, programmes for international students that come over. I also have my Instagram, uh, which provides me with some income, but it's very sporadic and it's kind of all or nothing, so that can't really be counted on that often. But I'm also an ambassador for outreach at the university, so I can work on like open days and stuff, and they pay really well. Yeah, they do. Really, <laughs> really well, yeah. So if that's something that your university does, whether it's Oxbridge or not, look at working for the university because they pay the best that I've probably ever been paid. Um, also, some colleges don't pay you, you know? How bad is that? Um, St Peter's did. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do it centrally through the university, so that yeah, might be why I am paid, but yeah, the college not paying you. So I thought that was the default that they did, um, because you're working. And then other colleges I found out just gave you, like, free loans. I'm also applying to so many grants at the moment that I can't even explain. So hopefully some of those pull through, but currently I have no grants, so just a big old loan. Woo!
So that was all our questions that we're going to be answering today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope they were super helpful. Part one of this video will be over on Rosie's channel if you were here first. So don't forget to go check that out. I will put the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Adios.